Okay, YouTube. <clears throat> this is a um, uh, an update video of um, what's been going on since my last video. Um, since my last video, about eight hours later, I decided to fly to America. <laughs> so I'm just going to get on with this. Sunday, October the nineteenth, two thousand fourteen, six fifty a.m. Sitting outside Heathrow Airport with a cold bun. Some trees around me and a fresh breeze coming in. I have smoked last spliff, so now I have nothing to hide. Feeling good, obviously. I'm a little anxious, but I couldn't online check in, but I'm not I'm, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Any messages for me out there? <laughs> Thinking of doing one uh medium thing. <laughs> Yes, coming in loud and strong. Who, brother, please? Es Patuel. Close enough. Spell it. Es Patuel. <laughs> See, at this point, when as soon as I put question marks, you know, I'm not sure if what I'm hearing is right. Where are you from? Apart from my underlined bits is my questions. Even harder. What's message? I met Lindsay Dre, aggressive, apartment, Belvermore. Yeah, I looked up, doesn't exist. And I thought maybe it's Baltimore. Am I going near? Yes, and I suppose Washington is near. Baltimore. Yes, bar, All Saints Club. I didn't check if that exists. <clears throat> Fella behind bar name, Barry or Larry, like I said, I didn't check it out in the end. He wants to talk to you. <laughs> you can help him. Thank you, choose to love. I'm getting there, me too. Tricky ride. So I was getting this tricky ride. Well, we'll see if this plays out. Day by day, stone by stone. Yeah, because I think I asked, you know, am I going to make, make it or something? Tricky ride, question mark. Is my guide there? Yes. So I was, I was getting this message of a tricky ride. Sunday, October... 19th, 2014, 10.40am. Sitting with a warm bum on my bag, feeling a bit of a moron for being so rash, but faith holding out for getting the ne on next flight. Realised I have had disagreements with God in my younger age. This one is about me wanting to be my way, my way, even when it breaks one of God's laws should be God's way to get in the right tracks and progress. Feel the emotions about all that happens as an error inside yourself. I must learn to play by the rules, law of attraction, love, truth, humility, reap what you sow. Whatever happens, I enjoy the interactions with the people here, mostly the staff. It's reminding me of my dream, the funny one. I love you, I love you, I love you. That was like something at the end of my dream. <clears throat> October 19th, 2014, 11pm, America time. I'm through customs and finally here. When we're in our mother's wombs, we are with God. The mother and the father of our soul. We can feel emotions from all around. Then we are born and become... And because God does not have a body, we start to confuse our earthly mother-father with the God-mother-father. And if our earthly M and D don't teach in line with God, then we begin our descent. We start to argue with God like wanting our own way all the time. And by the time we are three, we have left God and we descend th further. We have to feel all these errors and get back the full relationship with God. October the 20th, 4am. The future to a degree is laid out for you. When your eyesight is clear, you are accepting your future. When unclear, you are not. This info comes from opposite gender God. God that plays with you is same gender God. So you'll be more familiar with him, her. For me, male, Mother God does past and future. 
Father God, the now. Mother God, nurture. Father God, provider. By the way, I'm just, you know, I'm not actually saying this is absolutely um, definite. But it's the feeling I get, and I need to feel more about it to know more fully. When we trust in our godparents, all will be revealed to us by the events that come our way. We will be looked after and guided. Look to the skies for guidance. Walk the path of least resistance. For all is for you. Patience is often required and faith. Our fall from grace. We are in the womb knowing our mother and father God. We are aware of our soul's personality. We then start to confuse God with our earthly parents, the mother first as we are inside our mother. The battle begins. When we are born and start to see, hear and touch, and these things conflict with what we feel in our soul, we start to prefer the earthly things to the things of the soul. Our mother and father God do what they can to help us, but our earthly mother and father become dominant, and after two or three years of this, mother and father God get rejected by our own free will. We come away from sixth, seventh sphere living because it becomes too painful. Now we're still guided by them, but from a distance. And still there is no running away from your own soul. <clears throat> so all events in your life now will be designed to get you to return to God. An inevitable future no matter how long it takes and whether you manage it while you're alive or after you pass. But the longer it takes, the more uncomfortable it will be. Adolescence is another common period when we blame our parents rightly for their error. But generally we end up conforming to that way and we will repeat the error when we have children. After that we get further and further from God, <clears throat> and it starts to show in our physical bodies. What makes you feel good? You could argue that smoking a cigarette makes you feel good, if you are a smoker, but it's the feeling afterwards that is longer lasting, and usually for me anyway, after I've chosen to smoke I don't feel good. When I choose not to smoke, not only do I feel better, but the craving for a smoke lessens. I'll just add, I think tobacco is a real bugger because the pangs for it last, okay, only a few minutes. Maybe several minutes, maybe, yeah, ten minutes at the most, I'd say. Um, but the way it goes away and then comes back, and goes away and comes back, yeah, it's a little bit of a bugger. As I have used cannabis to temporarily get close to God, I know both these feelings well. <clears throat> yeah, because when I'm coming down from the cannabis, then I get the feeling that I'm getting away from God, which is, is very unpleasant. <clears throat> it has, though, helped me to understand what and who God is, and strengthened my resolve to day by day through truth, love and humility, progress on the path to God. God's reward to us for making the right choices is to make us feel good, and that is the answer. All temptations of the flesh are just for the flesh, where we need to feel good is in our soul, as this will radiate through our bodies, giving healing strength and energy, not to mention passion and desire and creativity. Get to know yourself. Why do you do what you do? And why you think what you think? Sorry, this is today, 31st of August, 3-ish p.m. Once your belief systems are in line with the truth, you'll naturally progress on the right path, making you better and better. You'll then enjoy the experience of interacting with others more and more. Eventually, then you'll be able to interact with God rather than constantly guessing at his, her ways. The soul has no tongue, 
it is all feeling. The tongue is the taster, the sampler, the wayfinder. The physical body is the soul's tongue in the physical world. Both good and evil can be consumed. The spiritual body is in the soul's is the soul's tongue in the spirit world. No evil can be consumed. Question mark question mark. See my surety is fading now. In dreams I have smoked cannabis, I have eaten but not often and seemingly only natural stuff. Very unsure on this, but possibly cannabis in its pure form could be okay. <laughs> I haven't smoked fags and not sure if I've drunk alcohol, although many times I've possessed some things but not consumed them. Yeah, I'm losing it. Sorry, you couldn't see that, could you? <clears throat> uh, right, October 31st, 5-ish p.m., page 1. Noah, hello? Yes. I sailed to sea one fine day on a skipper heading east. Captain's name was Shurgun Blackbeard. We headed along for three days. Bad weather struck. Me and Worsley weren't too bright about ship life. Boggsy and Moron played a trick on us. They told us ship's cat needed rescuing from the deck and that the youngest two <coughs> crew, as the youngest two crew, it was our job. They warned us that the cat, when spotted, would scamper off and that we'd better get to it quick because the weather was getting worse and ship's captain was partial to the cat. Well off we went darting here and there looking for the cat. The weather was horizontal rain, all souls, all sails down, helmsman on his own. One of the crew was holding a fluffy ball on a black rope from up the mast. <clears throat> I muggins fell in and nearly drowned. Imagine living for twenty years of a six hundred year life and then nearly dying at that age. I bore a deep dislike for those two men and felt revenge was the right response, cause and reaction. But according to the sign of truth, it broke the high law, the loving law. I'd been to the sign of truth and spent two weeks there, waiting to ask questions when an appropriate gap occurs and listening to all the answers and questions of others, including my master Barabbas. <clears throat> After this, I eventually went back to the sign of truth to argue with it and argue with it. No one had ever done this before. A man and a man had been dead for years and becoming legendary. It was well known that they committed original sin, wanting to be gods over others, and were banished from the area in which the sign of truth was located, in the Garden of Eden. The sign is a most beautiful location because of its popularity. There remains enough trampled earth for hundreds of people. This was the story of Noah from another Southampton seaman who likes me to smoke tobacco grass. Noah asked the sign. He had had plenty of time to think about this first question, which only Noah knows. Pete's. Noah's life had become dark and dismal for refusing to forgive the two tricksters. That's not Noah's story, that's Peter's. <laughs> story of Noah from Peter, not 100% fact. Noah became dark and dismal, plotting against the sign of truth so that he could take his revenge, and he believed this would... cleansing of... <laughs> of all his pain. Serpent is the sign of truth. It was with man in the beginning. The Bible is the lie that was told to hide the sign of truth. The sign of truth is truth, the truth. It's what's, it's with you in your mind. I wanted revenge, question mark. God has forbidden us to eat or touch the fruit of the tree of knowledge or the fruit of truth. This suggests that God has not given us free will. God know it and when you eat it your eyes will be opened, true so far, and you'll be like God's lie. A lie truth lie sandwich. 
original man was and did happen. It was wanting to be God over others, which all our souls created by God. When all our souls created by God, our souls, mother and father, wanting to be equal to them. But we're babies. The sign of truth is a reminder from mother and father not to error, but also the way in which we can learn anything we desire and get closer to God in understanding. This is a family tree with the year on top, apart from Adam, I've done that. that's how long Adam lived, 930 years, and he had Seth 130 years after he was born. Seth lived for 912 years, and in the year, like, if you like to say 235, Enosh was born. Okay, so then over here we got Abel, I don't think he had any kids, but others, you know, who knows how many kids Adam had. And so Cain killed Abel. So I don't think he had any. So there were two lines. Well, and all these others. But two that are talked about. It's like parables, I suppose. Cain, you know, there was another sin there. So they, they had that curse on them. But others will get seven times the sin. And then Lamech went for two wives. And his line, ever since then, they'll get um, the more here. I just haven't stopped writing them all down. Well, apparently, because <clears throat> the Bible then changes, says Noah wiped everyone out. Well, not Noah, but claimed that God wiped everyone out. But I'm sure they didn't, because I think the line of Cain still exists. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know, do I? That's my feeling. So then the Noah stuff... You know, and look at the years now. Now we're born 1051. Lamech was quite old when he had Noah. 180 odd. So there's this, around this time, around like, when Adam dies, you know. But Adam can still influence from the spirit world. Interesting. Man's lives shortened to 120 years. Noah made him a slave when he was drunk. When Noah was drunk, Shem was blessed. Division of labour, bless Shem. Slave cursed Ham, Japheth even. Yeah, in there's when Enoch left early. I've got those years mixed up, but those. anyway, I'll just read this. <clears throat> Original sin is inevitable, but had to be a free will choice. It was felt by the soul and passed on to children. It came out in Cain and Abel as a rivalry, as God would favour, as God would favour good works. Genesis 8. Cain murders Abel lies to God about it. People at this time had a permanent communication with God. Cain's descendants may have had the same curse that if anyone hurts them, they will be avenged sevenfold, but they will be marked so that this is known. Am I one? Many of us must be, or all of us. By Lamech, the avenge is seventy-sevenfold. That's why the world is hurting. Every sin is 77-fold recurring, so it's not every sin. Oh, well, I didn't check the full line then. Genesis 6, roughly 1,500 years since man began. Sons of God, who had passed into the spirit world, continued to influence those on earth badly, and was possibly a spirit influencing Noah to perform the wicked gift to remove the truth from those on earth. Yeah. Yeah. Genesis 9.6, eye for an eye. God responds with a vow of protection for those who continue in God's way, the rainbow. 
Did Noah want to make a lineage of chosen people that still exists to this day? He would have learned that spirit influence was possible. In the Bible, Abraham's God is Noah, and he has, and he has now turned to God, turned back to God. A long time ago, but others want to keep it going. Okie dokie. Ciao Bella. Bye.